Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Today we're here to talk about the Para Ordnance P1245, a high capacity, double stack, 1911 based gun holding 12 rounds of 45 ACP in its double stack magazine. Now, in these days of the 2011 and its various offshoots, we're all pretty familiar with the idea of high capacity 1911s. But Para Ordnance was the first one to do it successfully and bring it to market. They did this originally as a kit, then in 1990 they began producing complete guns. And they're pretty good. Um, they went through brief patches where quality control was a little inconsistent, but overall they have a decent reputation. And um, I've owned some and I never had any complaints about them. Now, this one, the P1245, is the same size as the Colt Officer's model, and is very obviously modeled on it. When we get into the tabletop, you'll see that. And um, at the time, you had a choice if you wanted a Compact 45. You could get a Detonix that held six shots, or you could get a Colt Government Officer's model which I think also held six shots. And um, that was it. So to come out with a high capacity compact 1911, para ordinance was really on to something. Of course, what they were on to was the wrong gun at the wrong time. This is the period where everyone in their Sister Barbara was switching to 9mm or 40 Smith & Wesson, which was very much the new hotness at the time. And a 45 was becoming a bit of a red-headed stepchild in both the competition and law enforcement world. And so uh, they, they struggled on for a number of years and made some very interesting guns, and in the end were consumed by the, the conglomerate that was Remington. And, um, you know, this isn't Forgotten Weapons, so we'll leave that stuff to Ian. In the meantime, let's have a look at this thing on the tabletop. So, the Para Ordnance P1245 is heavily based on the Colt Government Officer's model, as far as the slide and everything goes, right down to being a Series 80 type of slide assembly with the firing pin block from the Series 80. Despite this... Let's unload and show clear. No magazine, no, no cartridge, right. Um, despite this, the trigger is really genuinely nice. There is some take up, of course, but on a carry pistol, I don't really consider that a, de a detriment. And the reset is commendably 1911 short. So it's a rather nice gun to shoot. Now, the most obvious difference between this and a government officer's model is this. It's chunky. But it needs to be to accommodate the 12-round magazine, which is completely lacking witness holes, which I don't particularly like that it does not have them. And in size, it's really pretty similar to a Glock 19, but significantly heavier since it's steel frame, I believe this weighs 32.5 ounces, according to my scale. And if that's not dead on accurate, cut me some slack. Scales vary. So, the sights are decent sights. See, three dots. They work fine. They do not stand out either for being wonderful or bad. They're just good, useful sights, and they work fine. The gun does not have an ambidextrous safety, which I'd really rather it did. But, you know, other than that, it's uh, pretty much what you'd expect. Now, if you're not familiar with a government officer's model, uh, Colt had to work around Detonic's patents to make a gun this short because Detonix had patented the bull barrel. 
So what they did was they made a cone barrel, which is not a true bow barrel, and put in an oversized bushing to work with it. And the bushing needs to be oversized because the standard size bushing would hit the recoil lugs on such a small gun. So it's pretty clever workaround to Teutonic's patents. And it's, it's not an optimal solution, but it's a solution and it works. So disassembly is um, very similar, but a lot of people aren't familiar with the cold officer's model. So first things first, take a screwdriver and rotate, push the recoil plug in and rotate it so it catches. And then you can remove the bushing. Then, by rotating the cap until it's 180 degrees out from where it started, you can remove the recoil plug, which takes tension off the recoil spring, making it very easy to complete disassembly by removing the slide stop, and there you go. Which brings us to one of the decisions that I find questionable about this. It's the extremely abbreviated, I'm, I'm going to go with guide rod, even though it doesn't much. Um, typically on short 45s, in the fullness of time, we have discovered that it's very, very, very useful to have a full length guide rod to manage the spring. Now, I've heard a few reports of issues with spring life on examples that have been fired very extensively because the spring isn't managed and it has considerable movement in its space inside the slide. Um, I don't know, but it looks janky to me. I just, I don't care for this. Uh, despite that, I will say I had zero malfunctions with the gun in about a hundred rounds. The barrel, as you can see, is the aforementioned cone type with a nice ramp, ramp cut, and uh, it's entirely conventional. And nothing really lacking here in quality of workmanship. Has a nice crown. Anyway, just basically, yeah, okay, nice 45 stuff. Now, in theory, the reassembly process is the exact opposite of taking it, taking it apart. In practice, it's an amazing pain in the ass to try and do it that way because nothing wants to stay where it's supposed to be. And that's owing to the differences between this and a full-size gun. So, put the barrel in place. And from here, of course, you're supposed to insert recoil spring and guide rod. <laughs> guide rod. That's cute. Um, and then, you know, put everything together. Yeah, I found with this particular gun that it's easier to do it wrong. So I'm going to show you how to do it wrong. So put the, with the barrel in place, put the bushing in, insert the recoil cap from the rear so that this lug engages here in this cutout and engages the bushing. Then insert the recoil spring and guide rod, which of course doesn't really want to stay there because there's no guide rod holding it in place. And then slide the whole thing onto the frame. And from there, it's pretty much straight-up 1911 stuff. Insert the slide stop. And Bob's your uncle. And there you have it. And um, it's a nice little gun. It's quite well made. And this example is in pristine condition. Um, the owner, when, when we test fired, told me that she was not sure it had ever been fired before. And, um, she might be right. 
So, Power Ordnance P12. A small gun with a magazine writ large. Oh, here's a bit of an extra. Some of you may have noticed this in the background. This is an Extreme Gunworks full-length guide rod and recoil system for a Colt Officer's model that I just happen to have lying around. So I'll show you how that works too. Barrel goes in as normal and the bushing goes in straight away. And gets rotated into position. Then you insert the recoil system. Hopefully with more coordination than I'm exhibiting. And this goes in and engages here. And then you push forward on this, remove the retainer, and slide everything together. And once again, the gun is in functional form. Slide locks back on an empty magazine and has enough rear travel left to release. So, all good. And frankly, I think this is a significantly better system, both in terms of taking it down and putting it back together and just in general operation of the gun. And of course, this cunning tool, which is a bit of bent wire, goes in here the slide onto it and then you can pop this out slide it off and everything comes apart and stays all in one piece so it doesn't go off into the nooks and crannies of the shop and vanish forever so that's just a little add-on I thought I'd include Pretty neat. The P1445 and its successor, the P1245 and the Warthog and all the others, these are the good guns. They seem to work well. And um, of course, I never leave anything alone, so I make some changes, not least which would be an ambidextrous safety in the full length guide rod. But you know, other than that, I could be very happy with this gun. And this exact gun almost made me very happy and my finances very unhappy because I saw it in the case at Pinto's and I immediately turned and walked away because I knew if I looked it over I was probably going to have to find some way to to purchase it and our our budget really was not there for that at that time so a friend of mine walked in and they saw it and they did in fact buy it so I got the best of both worlds. I got to shoot it and enjoy it, which I did. It's a nice gun to shoot. And, um, and I don't have to pay for it. <laughs> anyway, uh, people are asking genuinely silly money for these on Gunbroker and are generally speaking not getting it. Realistically, 450 to to $1,000 is what you might expect to pay for one of these. Is it worth it? That's up to you. Uh, I, As I said, I quite like it in a 12-shot compact 1911, and honestly, if the weight doesn't bother you, why not? So, if you like the video, please hit like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, there's a link for that in the description. I hope this finds you well. Stay safe and take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.